interprets correction, unlike the RS, where both the military judiciary and the military function throughout the end of the world. So let me conclude on this topic. In terms of the individuals that the prosecutor said were his subordinates, General Perisic did not have the mechanisms to take disciplinary measures which he had under the law on the Army of Yugoslavia. The cases that the prosecutor has shown here had to do exclusively with those matters where he took action pursuant to orders from the Supreme Defense Council of Yugoslavia. I will add one more thing on and that has to do with command responsibility. I will discuss briefly the mechanisms of preventing crimes from being committed. The prosecutor claims that General Perisic had the mechanisms to prevent the alleged subordinates from committing the crimes because he could order them to return to the Army of Yugoslavia, paragraph 786. Now, please take a look at this paragraph. In this paragraph, again, the prosecutor actually highlights and supports our thesis that those individuals not in the Army of Yugoslavia. But let us see whether General Perisic had any mechanisms to issue any orders to the members of the 30th or 40th Personnel Center to return or to be returned to the Army of Yugoslavia. In the absence of evidence to support this thesis, the prosecutor refers to um, evidence which he misinterprets and also misquotes. In addition to that, the prosecutor, speaking of the mechanism of effective control, where he discusses the transfers and appointments, in paragraph 785 of his brief, the prosecutor says the following, and I will read this out in English. Perisic's authority to transfer and appoint VJ members to the VR, VRS and SVK and Hicks exercise of it was a dispensable lifeline that sustained the vitality and viability of VRS and SVK. As Mladic informed Milosevic, quoting, the assistant of Fry and then three footstops, the army was invaluable. It will be difficult to imagine a course of events if it had not been for that assistance. It was compre comprehensive. Sorry. Now, when the prosecutors quoted in this paragraph the words of General Mladic, quoting this sentence, it quoted Exhibit P2710. Now, let us take a look at this exhibit and see what it really says. Can we have P2710 on the screens, please? This is General Mladic's letter addressed to President Milosevic on the 17th of December 1995 after the signing of the Dayton Accords. And the sentence that was quoted by the prosecution in its final brief, as I read it out a little earlier, we can see it here, a reference to it here at the very beginning. Mr. President, all this time of war, the assistance of the Federal Republic of Yugoslavia, and especially Serbia, and your own personally to Repub Republic of Serbsk and the Army was invaluable. It would be difficult imagine the course of events 
if it had not been for that assistance. It was comprehensive and basically timely. Now, if you read out the entire document, and I know that you will do it with due care, there is no mention whatsoever here of the Army of Yugoslavia. The army that is mentioned is the Army of Republika Srpska, and yet we have the words and the quotations as used by the prosecutor in the final brief, and you can judge it for yourself where he is referring to this document as being a reference to the Army of Yugoslavia. Now, I would like you to put this in the same context that Mr. Guy Smith mentioned two days ago when he discussed the importance of the treatment of the context. So please bear this example in mind as well. But let us now go back to the main topic. This is something that the OTP submitted and has to do with this exhibit. Now, the topic is, could uh, General Perisic have orders for the members of the uh, Army of Yugoslavia, as they put it and as we put it, uh, members of the VRS, to be um, uh, taken back to the VJ ranks and to be um, to issue orders to that effect, and that should prove uh, uh, the uh, control mechanism. And what we are dealing here is with food and flour. Nowhere in the document is there any mention of uh, any army. It is only uh, the um, necessities and needs on the part of Republika Srpska that um, are mentioned here. The OTP put, have put forth uh, an entire body of evidence, or, or actually have ignored an entire body of evidence about the procedures and uh, authorities to uh, bring about the return of personnel to the VJ. And this is something that I mentioned yesterday. An officer who wanted to return uh, uh, to the Army of Yugoslavia could have done so only with the approval and consent of his superior officers within the VRS. And uh, General Perisic could not issue any orders in that context whatsoever. The evidence that the prosecution relies upon in support of this thesis are documents about a procedure which was set up and that was operational, but these were final orders, Naredbe, which were as virtual as the orders that we referred to yesterday, the orders on transfer, which were important to have their status regulated. But they always stemmed from the procedure itself, which was that the main staff of the Army of Republika Srpska, and that's what we're interested most in here, uh, when we're talking about the provision of the uh, officer's corps and control mechanism, as well as the Army of uh, the uh, uh, SR. Uh, RK. I think that they were invoking the document uh, um, involving uh, um, Babic and uh, Republika Srpska. They were taken out of context. I don't have the paragraph here at hand, but this was something that the prosecution relies upon in supporting their thesis of the control mechanism. And they had to do with um, the documentation, documentation relating to Officer Babic. But taken in isolation, they cannot lead to a, a reasonable finding that uh, uh, there was anything that could be done uh, on the part of the Army of Yugoslavia. And this is something that should be viewed together with Article 33 of the Instructions Governing the Work of Personnel Centers that we mentioned yesterday, as well as the testimony given by witnesses who were involved in this process. We had two witnesses to that effect, and both Skrbic and Malcic testified to the um, mechanism as it was, and which had to uh, work solely with the consent of the main staff. And Shkrbic referred to the very rigid position by General Mladic as to who would be allowed to return to the Army of Yugoslavia. All those who left uh, the VRS ranks without that consent, without that approval, were uh, regarded as deserters. And that was the case of Antic and Vujic, if you recall. I will not be discussing uh, this evidence, because um, 
you have seen the submissions on the part of the prosecution. We've given you our submissions in our final uh, uh, trial brief. I cannot add anything more to that. Can we move into private session for a moment, please? Please move into private session. Thank you very much, Mr. Register. Yes, Mr. Lukic. So, do you it? On the other hand, when we're discussing the orders and transfers, which I continue um, uh, submitting are, were virtual, and I explained to you yesterday why I am of this view, there is another example, a fact, that I would like to remind you of. This is... Um, the testimony of a witness who himself experienced uh, one such administrative order and, and um, described uh, his response to it. General Novakovic testified that he had refused uh, the decree issued by uh, President Lilic in 1991, appointing him to a position within the VJ that of the um, uh, assistant uh, uh, chief of general staff for, uh, staff for um, ground forces. This is something that we said did not exist in his personnel fire, but at page 13278 he said that he would not accept that appointment. And what happened? Nothing. Is that an example of subordination. What sort of, which argument in this part of testimony which uh, was not challenged by the prosecution in that portion uh, would the prosecution offer uh, of uh, an officer uh, saying no to his purported superior and uh, uh, bearing no consequences for it in, and uh, and then what the superior would say very well I will not be asking anything more of you sorry would, would that be what they would say so when it was asked by the SDC that members of the on the 40th personnel center uh, after the fall of the RSK should report to the 30th uh, personnel center this was P798 and P766 um, when Novakovic was asked to do so, he refused flatly. And this answer um, was um, interesting, was found, found interesting by the presiding judge and asked for an additional answer uh, as to whether there were any consequences borne by him because uh, there was the constant transfer of personnel. He answered at page 13349 uh, 13, that uh, he bore no consequences whatsoever in relation to that. So what sort of a finding can you make on the basis of uh, evidence? Well, most certainly you cannot uh, conclude that Perisic was able to order anyone to return to the VJ, nor that... Um, any of the uh, senior officers uh, were aware of the fact that they could do so themselves, that's to say, return to the ranks of the VJ without having obtained prior approval from their superiors within the VRS. They knew that if they took such steps that they would be liable to disciplinary procedures within their armies, that's to say, VRS and the SVK. Let me... Um, make my final uh, findings concerning command responsibility. The prosecution uh, did not prove uh, beyond a reasonable doubt that any of the elements of this form of responsibility uh, were present and primarily that uh, there existed the superior um, subordinate relationship that I referred to yesterday. The other um, elements uh, we dealt with in our final brief. There was no superior subordinate relationship between General Perisic and those that the prosecution indicated as uh, um, perpetrators of crimes and as his subordinates. Samo ću da dam još jedan mali 
Another point that I'd like to make before I move to my final thesis, and that's P2879, and that's the video clip of an interview, and I think he was the Vice President of the Republic of S Serbia at the time, General Perisic. This was sometime in 2000. You saw it. You saw him in civilian clothing there. But you have to review the entire clip. It uh, covered the latter period of the uh, dissolution of uh, uh, the SFRY and JNA. The, it covered the, this long period of disintegration from the start of the conflict uh, to the end of the conflict uh, in Kosovo, I believe. This is an edited TV show with many participants who spoke of various uh, topics and events. Um, um, they uh, talk uh, um, without having any questions put to them. There is no proper uh, course of the conversation. You could actually fall into a trap of uh, arriving at conclusions that could be highly unreliable. We, can't, we cannot conclude on the basis of this interview as to what uh, specifically General Perisic was asked about and what period he was discussing. Um, uh, this sort of evidence um, should be dealt with carefully because their um, probative value is highly limited. I would like to um, uh, move on to my final uh, stage uh, of uh, submission, so perhaps we should take our break a bit um, earlier. I, I will not take much more time. This last point that you introduced, uh, P2879, you, s you referred to as a video clip, and I've been pressing in and out of here trying to get a video clip. And on the contrary, I see a document here which I do not think you have that. spoken to before. Uh, is it the document you're talking about, or is, or is that a video clip that we are going to be looking at? This, ja this mislim, is the document that you say we must ja mislim, da je, ja mislim. I think that Mr. Harmon uh, made a mistake in the number of the document. That's where the confusion perhaps arose from. The uh, exhibit I'm uh, referring to is P2879, and the number we have in the transcript is P2873. The uh, exhibit is, in fact, a transcript of the entire show that you viewed. It's a transcript. It's a, a, a transcription of the TV show. No, no, it's not a video. What is it you want us to look at? The video show or this? Well, if you only view the TV show without uh, referring to the transcript, you won't be able to fully understand it because I don't think it's got um, all of the subtitles it should have. Since clear, the transcript is P2879. What is this transcript uh, uh, exhibit number? Yeah, miss. I see Mr. Hope. Perhaps I could be of assistance. Yes, please. The video and the transcript has the exhibit number P8279. 2879 is the, both the video and the transcript. And the transcript. Yes. Okay. Thank you, sir. We'll take a break. Uh, is that convenient for you? We'll take a break and come back at quarter to 11, quarter Jan. All rise for your volume.